And our last question of question 2 is 2.6. The diagram below shows homeostatic control of blood glucose. Now, what you should know me by now, you should know what I'm going to tell you to do. What is the first thing you do? Is the first thing to go straight to the questions or is the first thing to unpack our diagram? First thing, unpack the diagram. In the first box, we've got high glucose levels. This is going to cause gland A to produce hormone B. Let's write in those names. What produces the hormone that occurs when there are high blood glucose levels? The hormone, remember, is insulin. What produces insulin? The pancreas. We can be even more specific and we can say the beta cells in the islets of Langerhans are going to produce insulin. And that is going to have an effect on the liver and the body cells. What effect is insulin going to have? It's going to increase uptake of glucose by the cells in the liver and in the body. But now let's go to a different color and talk about what happens if we have low glucose levels. Well, the same gland is going to produce hormone C. And what is the hormone? that is antagonistic or works in an opposite way to insulin. We're talking here about glucagon. And glucagon is produced also by the pancreas, but not the beta cells. It's going to be the alpha cells of the islets of Langerhans. And glucagon is also going to have an effect on the liver and the body cells, but it's going to cause the liver and the body cells to take the glycogen, which was stored glucose, and convert it into glucose, and then liberate that glucose into the blood. We've spent a couple of minutes unpacking the diagram and that is so important grade 12s that unpacking of the diagram makes you confident and on top of things for answering what is coming up we have to identify gland a what is gland a gland a is the pancreas we do not have to do anything more identify is the same as name. Tell us what that gland is for one mark. Identify hormone C. We go back here and we've already unpacked it. You're not now starting to answer your questions by trying to interpret the diagram. You've already interpreted the diagram and now we're going back and extracting that information from the diagram. So hormone C, we just have to identify it, is glucagon. And that is our one mark. And now we start getting a little bit more tricky. A certain disorder causes decreased production of hormone B. Remember that we said hormone B was insulin. Okay, let's go and check. Hormone B is insulin. Great stuff. Now, what do they want us to do with it? Explain how this will affect blood glucose levels. So we've got to say that if we have low insulin, the consequences are going to be less uptake of glucose 
from the blood into the liver for storage and the body cells for making of ATP or energy. Another thing that we're going to have as a consequence of that is that we're going to suffer from high blood glucose levels. And that is going to be dangerous because the body cells are going to not be able to produce ATP and we've got dangerously high glucose levels. And so that gives us our three marks. We're talking about this disorder where we have decreased production of insulin. We're now asked to name the disorder. And the disorder is diabetes. And if we have decreased production of insulin, we're talking about type 1 diabetes. In type 2 diabetes, we still have insulin produced, but the cells can't take it up. Scientists have been investigating the use of adrenaline as a treatment for people who cannot produce hormone C. Why would that actually work? Well, we know that hormone C, going back to our diagram, hormone C is glucagon, which is going to cause a, a glycogen to be converted into glucose and increase our blood sugar levels. Well, how will adrenaline do that? Now you've got to think to your sympathetic nervous system or our sympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system. And you've got to think of your fight and flight response that adrenaline increases blood sugar levels, it causes the cells to, like in the liver that, and in the skeletal muscles that are storing glycogen to have it converted to glucose so that the muscles can help you run away or fight whatever's threatening you. And so adrenaline has very much the same function as glucagon. Glucagon is going to work routinely on your body as you get hungry, for example. But adrenaline is going to work when you are placed into a situation of anxiety. And that is why the treatment will work. All right, and that brings us to the end of question two in section B.